1035. We continue on AM 1420, The Answer. Appreciate you being with us this morning. We're still trying to put the pieces together in that Nashville story, but we're going to take a break from it now and talk about Ohio politics in its purest form. Uh, we're talking about voting in the elections and whether or not what happened uh, this past, no, oh, actually it was this past May, uh, should have happened. Uh, and that is, of course, open voting in Ohio's primaries. We know what happened. We talked about this in great detail. The Daily Beast was among left-wing uh, media outlets that openly encouraged Ohio Democrats to take Republican ballots in the open primary and vote for the most Democrat-like uh, Republicans because they knew they weren't going to be able to win. They knew no Democrat was going to be able to win in the gubernatorial race. They knew no Democrat was going to be able to win in the Senate race. And so they said, we would be a lot better off with people like Mike DeWine, who's more like us as a governor, and we'd be better off with somebody like Matt Dolan, who's more like us as a senator, than with some of those actual conservatives who are running in those races. So cross over and screw up their election, screw up their primaries so that we can get what we want. It worked in one of the cases. It didn't in the other as J.D. Vance uh, won the Senate race. But now the time has come, according to one of the primary, one of the principals, rather, in those uh, primaries, Jim Renacci, to close Ohio primary balloting. Uh, Jim Renacci, former gubernatorial candidate, a former congressman, former, former, may- former mayor of Wadsworth, mm-hmm. joining us on AM 1420, The Answer. Congressman, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, Bob. I'm doing great. How are you? Good, sir. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. So I read with uh, great interest your op-ed, and I support it wholly and enthusiastically, and I am livid that there are so many Republicans who don't. There are Republicans, in fact, I've heard from one of them this morning as I just started talking about this, who absolutely love the open primary system. So why don't we start with, uh, give us the the gist of your op-ed. Well, Bob, it's pretty simple. And, and look, Ohio already has laws in place that say if you're a Republican, you only vote in a Republican primary. If you're a Democrat, you only vote in a Democrat primary. But in 2010, actually in 2008, many people will remember that uh, a radio show host, national radio show host, uh, who was, was pushing for Republicans to cross over and vote for Hillary Clinton. And that was the start of it. In Ohio, there was a large mass That was called Operation Chaos. Yeah, that was Rush, of course, the late Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, he called it Operation Chaos. Let's go over there to try to stop Obama. Let's let's try to vote in the the Democrat primaries for Hillary. You're 100% right. Go ahead. Absolutely. And he did that, and he was successful. And a tremendous amount of Republicans crossed over and voted for Hillary Clinton. And at that time, Jennifer Bruner was the secretary of state. And she said, we are going to enforce we're going to enforce the law. And we're going to start asking at the polls, are you a Republican or you're a Democrat? Because clearly and she got it right. If you're a Democrat, you should vote in Democrat primaries. And if you're a Republican, you should vote in Republican primaries. At that same time, uh, John Eusted was running for uh, election as secretary of state. And he came out and said, look. There is no way we should stop this. Uh, we should allow Democrats to cross over. It's going to build our party ranks because Democrats are going to leave Repub- the Republican Party. And then he won the election in 2010. And in 2011, uh, at that time, Secretary of State Eusted put out a uh, what, what they call a memorandum in the secretary's office that said, you cannot question anybody anymore at the primary location. Um, so since 2010, there's been no questioning, and there's been some uh, case law that's gone to the Supreme Court that says, well, you really can't question. But clearly, many states have said, we got to fix this. And in our surrounding states, Kentucky and Pennsylvania say, look, this should not be a political decision on day the day of the election. <laughs> this should be a conscious decision. And in, in Kentucky... By December 31st, you have to decide whether you want to be a Republican or Democrat. And if you're already a Republican, you don't have to do anything. And if you already are a Democrat, you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But if you want to change, you have to make that decision. Uh, Some states say you have to do it within 30 days in advance. And clearly, that makes it a conscious decision, not a decision on a primary. Now, Bob, let me tell you what really stirred this up. Not the primary, even though I believe the primary, there was a big crossover. I was actually with a Democrat, um, uh, speaking with him, 
And we were talking about this subject, a very prominent Democrat up in Cleveland, and he said to me, Jim, I like the idea of being able to come over, especially in Ohio, and make decisions for Republicans because the Democrats don't have a bench. So I know the Democrats aren't going to win, so I'd like to actually cross over and make the decisions as to who won. And I thought about that and said, wait a minute, that is the problem. Democrats are making decisions for Republicans. So my op-ed basically says, let's enforce the law. Let's stop the rating of our primary system. Let's require people to make a decision either 30 days in advance or by December 31st, like a lot of other states are doing, and then we'll stop the crossover of votes. And look, in the primary, we now have documentation that 235 uh, Democrats, at minimum, 235,000 crossed over and voted. Now, we don't know who they voted for, but in most cases, you were right. They voted for Dolan or DeWine. Yeah. But that, that needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed. It was and, in left-wing and I media. Add, like I said, they were being encouraged and kind of directed. Now, obviously, not everybody follows everything somebody says, but but if you do have that many crossovers, they didn't do it independent of the, some of those uh, pushes, those public pushes for these individuals. They didn't come over there because they really liked uh, a Republican conservative candidate. They came over to try to make sure somebody wins those Republican primaries that they can stomach if they can't have their own guy. Um, I, I, Congressman Renee, say I want. And by the way, we're going to talk about uh, the Lincoln Day dinner uh, that is coming up as well in a little over a week uh, in just a moment. But I want to go to this. Um, there's an op-ed in the Illyria Chronicle Telegram, which is uh, the paper that is, uh, quote-unquote, of record where I live, um, that essentially is saying that you wrote your op-ed in uh, opposition to open primaries because you lost, uh, blaming blaming the loss in the primary on open voting uh, in the primary. And here's what they said. Even if that hadn't happened, this wasn't the reason R- Renacy lost. He, farmer Joe Blystone, and to a lesser extent former state rep Ron Hood, split the anti-incumbent vote, allowing DeWine to win a plurality. Um the article then goes on to quote Lorain County Republican Chairman David Arredondo as saying that Democrats who crossed over to vote for DeWine probably did so because they approved of his handling of the pandemic. Oh, they just actually liked him better than they did uh, the, the Democratic candidate, that they weren't coming over to cause chaos at all. Uh, and that uh, people like you are, are complaining because it's sour grapes that you didn't win your primary. How do you respond to those critics and uh, particularly uh, that particular Republican chair? Well, I've heard Aaron Dondo say this before. Aaron Dondo actually lost his race for uh, state central committee, I think, because of some of these views. But quite too. frankly, if he was correct, if he was correct, why are Republicans losing ground then? I mean, his argument is that, well, you know, Democrats are crossing over, and, and, and that's great because Republicans get the advantage of that. Now, I've actually posted some numbers I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to find. Uh, while we're talking. But if you look at the last 10 years or 20 years of elections since 2020, Republicans have lost ground. So if this has worked since 2010, when we did this, if this was working, how can we have less registered Republicans today? And how come in 2016 and 2020, we had a storm of additional Republicans registered in 2016 and 2020? Well, I'll tell you why. Independents liked Donald Trump. And probably Democrats like Donald Trump, and they did cross over, and they supported Donald Trump. So we went almost, and again, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but you can find it in in much of my posting, Mm -hmm. uh, is that we went from almost 3 million registered Republicans, and now we're back to 1.9 million registered Republicans in 2022. So clearly, anybody who says, oh, this is sour grapes, oh, this is... This is a way of stopping Republicans from crossover. Just doesn't have the data. Just does not have the data. The data is out there. It shows that we have in the last, uh, since 2010 especially, but in the last 20 years, Republicans are losing ground in Ohio. And every once in a while they pop back up in 2016 and, tw- and, and 2020. We actually had a surge of registered Republicans. But we're all the way back down to 1.9 million Republicans Uh, registered. And we were at 3 million. We were at 2 million. So we're at one of the lowest points right now, which shows you that not only did they cross over, but they crossed back. And again, this is why I call it rating. 
It it is. That's, that's very important. Back back I hope, Congressman, that you are able to maybe write a follow up to that op ed part two and point those things out. Because, again, I've got people I've been having an off air debate with uh, Chairman Arredondo uh, during my commercial breaks here. And he's pushing and bragging about uh, how successful this open primary system is and said, quote, Ohio is a center right state, not a far right one. And I'm about winning. And I had this debate with him because he was very much pro Mike DeWine, very much pro Bob Paducek, engineering those um, uh, those uh, endorsements and those funds to uh, b- uh, to uh, Mike DeWine before there was even an ind- endorsement given. Uh, all of these things, and he is quote unquote, quote unquote all about winning. But as I said to him, Congressman, if we're winning by electing Republicans who govern like Democrats, what are we winning? You know, to Mike DeWine to me is just like the other the the twenty two in the Ohio State House uh, that completely split the massive supermajority that we had there. They're trans Dems, they're Republicans, but they identify as Democrats by their actions. So what's the point of of winning? If what we win by inviting Democrats to come over to pick our primary nominee uh, is for them to nominate somebody who's like them, who's like a Democrat. Well, you're exactly right. And look, um, Aaron Dondo is in a Democrat uh, county in many cases. He'll say that, that it's great that Democrats cross over, but the truth of it is not. Republicans should pick Republicans. Democrats should pick Democrats. I would take Aaron Dondo on head to head any time. If he wants to challenge and talk about how Republicans are growing by allowing the system, the numbers just don't prove it. And he's just wrong. He's wrong. And by the way, I'll book that right now, by the way, before you finish your point, uh, because I know David is listening. That's why he started messaging me during the show. Uh, by all means, David uh, Arredondo, we'll have a three-way conversation in my studio, and we'll we'll talk about this for an hour. If you want to have a head-to-head conversation with uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Renacy, go ahead, sir. No, I'd love to do that because clearly the numbers don't reflect it. Republicans are losing ground in Ohio. They continue to lose ground. And what we nearly need to do is let Republicans elect Republicans. I don't know why he would support. And by the way, there's not a Republican I talk to, which kind of tells you where David Arredondo sits. There's not a Republican I talk to that doesn't say, I agree, Republicans should only pick Republicans and Democrats should only pick Democrats. The problem is... You know, changing the system. I can tell you right now, Governor DeWine doesn't support this, a closed primary. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Eustad doesn't support this. I mean, this is what I'm hearing. Uh, Senate candidate Dolan doesn't support this. But clearly, if you want to win a Republican primary, get Republicans to vote for you. This isn't about sour grapes. I may never run again in the future, but here's what I want. I want future candidates to have the opportunity to have their party select them, not the other party select them. Yeah, that's what this should be all about. Last thing on this before we talk about uh, Lincoln Day dinner is um, what are you hearing from uh, the state house, uh, either the state house or the state senate? Um, is there is there a movement for, for this? Will somebody make this a uh, 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 proposal? And do you think that we, you know, obviously if we have the numbers, if all Republicans agree, the supermajority would be intact. But um, is there uh, is there an appetite for this? Is somebody planning on introducing it? There is a lot of support for it. We are um, talking to a lot of people. It's surprising from leadership all the way through. Um, Most donors support it. Most of the Republicans support it. I will tell you the the concern I have is that most this is an issue, uh, like any, controversial, Mm -hmm. that most people don't want to bring to the table because they're afraid (laughs) in many cases it could hurt them. But I can tell you the staunch conservatives are all for it. Even the, uh, the many of the moderates say the same thing. Yeah, Republicans should vote for Republicans. But in the end, and, and I'll tell you an interesting thing, uh, Frank LaRose, when he was in the Senate, actually put a bill out to support closed primaries. And he will tell you that uh, he, he had Republicans saying, well, no, I don't like that idea because I want um, – Democrats to come to our party and Democrats were saying, well, I don't like that idea because I like to come over and vote in the Republican Party. So they were saying the same thing. And he said he could not get support for it um, back when he was in the Senate. But he is supportive of it as well. Um, I do believe this is something we're going to continue to get traction on. It's one of the reasons why Aaron Dondo, if he's listening, probably wrote the op-ed. He probably received a call from Governor DeWine or someone and said, hey, you've got to counteract what Renacy is doing. Because we are making good progress around the state, and most Republicans, um, and, and I would say 99% of the ones I've talked to, 
said they support a, a, a fixing our primary system and making sure we have a closed primary. The only caveat they also say is we also would like to have a runoff, which I think is interesting as well. And by the way, I'll add this I to your too. listeners. Anybody who says runoffs are too expensive, we paid $25 million last year, this state, to have an August primary, only to say we're never going to do it again, only to say now let's do it again in August. So it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I have to chuckle. when uh, Politicians only do what's best for politicians. So, um, you know, we were willing to spend that $25 million to have a second primary. Yeah. We, should be able, we should be willing to spend that that $25 million to have a runoff to make sure the Republican or Democrat with the most plurality of the votes, the, the more than 51% is, is our uh, party nominee. Yeah, and I would agree with both of those things. That I was, I would also agree to spend the twenty million for one this August specifically to uh, change that constitution uh, constitutional amendment threshold to sixty percent. Because what's going to happen in November is going to be devastating, absolutely devastating to families, parents, and kids and unborn babies if we do not do that. And Jason Stevens, the uh, uh, trans dem speaker of the House, uh, is completely opposed to that. So we have a we have a full court press to contact Jason Stevens and make him change. His mind because this is a this is a disaster waiting to happen. 